So how would Jean Charest stack up against Pierre Polyevre? Will there be other entrants into the race? Is this a battle for the soul of the Conservative Party? Let's find out. The scrum is here. Joining us today, Bob Fife, the Ottawa Bureau Chief for the Globe and Mail, Stephanie Levitz, a Parliament Hill reporter for the Toronto Star, and our special guest for this round is the former industry minister, James Moore, uh, now at Denton's. Great to have everybody here. Obviously, all attention on the war in Ukraine, but in the midst of that, there's a political battle. James Moore, uh, what do you make of the fact that Pierre Polyevre is out campaigning already against Jean Charest, who hasn't even entered the race? How, how do you measure Jean Charest's potential impact here? Well, I, I think it's good for the party to have multiple candidates in the race. And look, Pierre Polyev and Jean Charest, they come from different regions of the country, different, frankly, generations within the party and different perspectives. Pierre Polyev, from the start of his campaign, has talked about economic issues, middle class issues, home ownership as a dominant concern, uh, fiscal issues and, and being a real conservative uh, in the face of challenges within the party to sort of unite it back together. Jean Charest comes from a very different school. Uh, and if he presents himself as a alternative prime minister to Justin Trudeau and says, you know, I, I've seen national unity crises before. This country is divided like never before. We see threats beyond our borders like never before and real stresses. And I've governed before federally and provincially in the province of Quebec. And I'm here to offer myself as prime minister. I think it provides, a, I think, a compelling choice for conservative party members. I think Pierre is still the front runner in the campaign. He's got, I think, a dominant position at this point. But I think the debate can be very healthy and good for the party, provided it doesn't go off the rails with, with um, divisive rhetoric that sort of is a sort of seen as a fight for the soul of the party, and it's either um, love it or leave it kind of an outcome um, for for either of the two candidates. Yeah, Steph, how, how do you see this? Uh, it's kind of remarkable already. Pierre Polly ever uh, campaigning that Jean Charest is a liberal. Uh, Jean Charest says, "Look, uh, I, I'm an experienced person. What, what do you make of what this says about the race?" So one, the race has the potential to be very nasty because it, in the extent to which it is a fight for the soul of the Conservative Party, that's one piece of it. The second piece of it is this race is about, you know, two things almost at the same time. It is about policy direction for the party, but it's also about healing a lot of wounds and, and pulling together a lot of chasms within the party that have been exacerbated under the tenure of Aaron O'Toole that were somewhat problematic under the tenure of Andrew Scheer. The fundamental question here is, can anybody lead the Conservative Party in a united, almost grown-up fashion besides Stephen Harper. And that's the question when I speak to grassroots party members. To them, this isn't who has the better idea on climate change or who can really help me bring down gas prices. It's about who can be the grown-up at the national and international political table on behalf of the Conservative movement and on behalf of Canada. These are exceptionally challenging and difficult times, both for Canadians as a whole and for the Conservative Party. And I think lots of folks are looking as leadership is their ballot box question. Who is the adult in the room? Bob, uh, by the way, we're, we have, Sheree's not even in, but Patrick Brown, a former MP, the mayor of Brampton may jump in, Leslie Lewis, social conservative may jump in. Uh, how do you measure this race so far? Well, the challenge for Mr. Sheree is to, is he can probably win a federal election against the Liberals but can he win the convention for the conservative leadership? He is going to have to sign up an awful lot of new members. Uh, red uh, Tories who had uh, you know, given up with the party, blue liberals who are completely dissatisfied with uh, the spending, big spending ways of the Trudeau liberals, and, and conservatives who want to win, want to be in government, want to run the country rather than sit in opposition. And he's got a very, very good chance of doing that if he can convince these people to buy memberships and say, I'm doing this for the good of the country. He is, as Stephanie says, the adult around the table. He has enormous amount of, of experience, both federally as a cabinet minister and as a Quebec premier. Of course, he carries baggage. Uh, Mr. Polyev is a right-wing populist. He has not accomplished much in his life. Uh, he was a, a, a junior cabinet minister and he got in trouble uh, for bringing in legislation was sort of would have rigged elections in favor or votes in favor of the conservatives and he is uh, he plays a kind of politics that we've seen already shown from them that's kind of nasty and lowbrow against Mr. Mr. Chere. We do talk about this James Warren you can comment on this this soul of the party kind of thing is it a center-right populism people associate with Mr. Paul Evra? is it a sort of bigger tent sort of center progressive conservative party uh, of Mr. Charest. Is that a fair way to decide?
describe what's at stake for the conservative party and maybe the conservative movement? Well, we'll see. Leadership races are often a, a road test of, of how, how you govern the party. A lot of people outside the party will, will see that as a proxy for how you might govern the country. And if all conservatives can't get along and find something and find a rallying cry together and a cohesive platform and a cohesive approach to governing a continental nation like Canada, then Canadians won't trust you to govern the country. Can't govern yourselves, can't govern the country. I think that's a challenge for both Jean Charest and for Pierre Poilievre and to present themselves as somebody who can unite the party and therefore be worthy of uniting and building the country going out. It's been said that the Conservative Party is not my father's Conservative Party. Jean Charest is about to find out it's really not my grandfather's Conservative Party either. All right, well, we'll find out whose party it is uh, and where that fight goes. i got to leave it there this morning. Uh, James Moore, thanks for joining us. I know Bob and Steph are going to stay with us for another round.